the Covenant Chaldean Monastery come forward. Brother Sinan Salem. This I know that God is for me. Alleluia, alleluia. and my feet from falling, that I may walk before God in the light of life. Glory to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, from age to age, amen, amen. Alleluia. presented yourself to be accepted and set apart as a perpetual member of the Sons of the Covenant Chaldean Monastery for your own sanctification and for the good of the Church. You stand now in this Church preparing to vow a whole life of dedication, and so I ask you to state your intentions. What do you seek before the altar of the Lord? My request is that the grace of God will dwell in me, that I fulfill His will and be accepted as a living oblation before Him all the days of my life. Have you given serious consideration to this request, knowing that in being accepted, you bind yourself permanently to your vows, bearing the responsibility which they require? <coughs> yes, Father, I have considered it seriously. I depend wholly on the grace of God, the prayers of His Holy Mother, and the, and the angels and saints to strengthen my frailty and to give myself freely to Him, that the Lord may accomplish in me what He has called me to. First, these vows bind you to take the evangelical counsel of poverty as your only treasure and that you detach yourself internally and externally from all worldly treasures. You will not be able to acquire nor deal with any earthly treasure, unless your superiors allow you to, but will depend, you will be dependent on the monastery regarding temporal needs, according to the rules of the monastery. You will be bound to this vow for the rest of your life. Therefore, are you ready to freely take upon yourself the vow of evangelical poverty, always and until death? Yes, Father, with the grace of our Lord and your prayers, I am ready to embrace and choose the vow of poverty in imitation of Christ our Lord, Mary his mother, and St. Joseph his foster father, who lived and died in poverty. Second, you must overcome the base desires of the flesh to live as a eunuch for the sake of the kingdom of heaven, as you vow complete chastity, in order that by transforming your heart from passions to charity, you will love the Lord with an undivided heart. In this, you will imitate our Lord Jesus Christ Mary most pure, and St. Joseph, her chaste spouse. Thus relying on the grace of God and the example of countless saints, you freely take upon yourself the virtue of chastity always and until death. Yes, Father, with the grace of our Lord and your prayers, I am ready to embrace and choose the vow of chastity, to live as Jesus in the home of Mary and Joseph, emulating them in the purity of their love and setting my body apart solely for God. Third, you must deny your own will and submit it to the rule of the monastery and the will of your superiors in everything except sin. Hence, you take the vow of complete obedience as the only law of life in all its details. In this, you will not do what pleases you, but, but what obedience imposes upon you. An invitation of Christ the Son, who manifested his divine sonship in his perfect obedience to the Father. Therefore, are you ready to make this sacrifice freely, which our weak nature despises? Yes, Father, with the grace of our Lord and your prayers, I am ready to embrace and choose the vow of obedience, imitating the divine Son, who humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even death on a cross. Finally, you must subject yourself to the typicon of the Sons of the Covenant Chaldean Monastery and the community life which is so central to it. In this, you will be required to pray, work, and live a common life as the typicon requires. Knowing the challenges and deprivations necessary therein, are you ready and willing to live this life without complaint, rebellion, criticism, or opposition, but freely and with joy for the sake of the Lord? Yes, Father, with the grace of our Lord in your prayers, I am ready to embrace and choose the monastic life as laid out in the Typicon of the Sons of the Covenant, Chaldean Monastery, in union with my brother monks. Now I ask you to state your vows to Almighty God. Almighty Father, in the name of your divine Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and by the grace of the Holy Spirit, I commit myself to live, 
completion of life begun in the baptism through the evangelical counsels of poverty, chastity, and obedience. In union with my brothers and through the typicon of the Sons of the Covenant Chaldean Monastery, today before you, my monastic family, and all those in attendance, with my complete freedom and with all my heart, I, Brother Sinan Salim, in the presence of His Excellency, Mar Emmanuel Shalita, and in the presence of my religious superior, Abbot and Kido Sipo, offer myself completely to you through the monastic vows for the rest of my life. I desire to live out these vows to glorify your holy name, to freely give back, give back to you the gifts you have freely given to me in love. I beg you for the grace and to aid and the aid to fulfill my vows through the intercession of Mary, most holy, St. Joseph, her spouse, St. John the Beloved, and all the saints and angels in heaven. Through the prayers of my brothers in the, in the monastery and the church gathered here, amen. شبح ستيق المريا سادع ويت الدكار حاسم الخلف المشمية ظلمتون المرقاني shall not be taken away from her. Your servant, Brother Sinan, has presented himself as an offering before your holy altar, the throne of your majesty, in the presence of your most holy mother, all the angels and saints, the priests of the Lord, and, the, and this people gathered here to live a life of Christian perfection, fully dedicated to you through the evangelical councils of obedience, poverty, and chastity. And the type, type con of sons of the Covenant Chaldean Monastery. Accept this offering, consecrate him to yourself, and made him like unto St. John, your beloved disciple. May the prayer of our Lady, the Blessed Virgin Mary, and her spouse, St. Joseph, aid him in fulfilling the vows he made today, that with them and with the saints and angels of heaven, he may sing glory to you now in eternity. Amen. Amen.
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Brothers and sisters, on this joyful day, I would like to reflect on a question that uh, we in the monastery are often asked. I'm asked, and so are the monks. It's a funny question. What are you for? What do you do? These are the questions that we're often asked, and I'd like to kind of give a, a brief answer to that question. In an encyclical written by Pope uh, St. John Paul II, uh, the encyclical was called Orientale Lumen, Light from the East. He wrote about the Eastern churches and their value, uh, within which he spoke uh, highly about the monastic tradition in the East and how much he wants it to be revived, especially in the West, especially in the United States, in the diaspora. There he says, monasticism is a reference point for all the baptized. So if you notice in some of the prayers, some of the things that Brother Sinan said in part of his vows was uh, pleading to God, asking him to bring to completion that what was begun in him in baptism. Monastic life is the full perfection of the life of baptism. It's baptism to its end. The value of monasticism is in its emphatic preference for the gospel message over and against the message of the world. The message of the world being putting a price tag on the human person, that we are worth as much as our bank account says that we are worth. We are worth as much as our assets. Monasticism will say, we're worth the image of God, and we take a vow of poverty to prove it, over and against what the world says. My being worth zero in a bank account says that I'm actually worth infinitely more, not because of that, but because of myself, because of the grace of God. Against the world which tells us that we should fill ourselves up with all kinds of bodily pleasures, all kinds of hedonism, that this is the way to, to happiness, just pleasing ourselves with the stuff of the world, or with impurities. The monastic, the monk will take a vow of chastity, a holistic purity, that says that this is the true road to happiness, to fulfill what Jesus says, blessed are the pure in heart, they shall see God. Against a world which says that self-determination is true freedom, that we are the masters of our own lives, that this freedom is a breaking up of all personal limitations so that we can express ourselves in whatever way we want to, do whatever we feel like without limitation. Against that ideology, the monastic life says, I take a vow of obedience, and I'm obedient to a rule. I'm obedient to somebody that God has put in my life. That giving up of my will over to God is true freedom, not what the world says, which ends in true slavery. And against the world which tells us that our value depends on our strength and what we do with our strength, we monks are quite weak, and we embrace that weakness. Because in embracing it, we embrace also the strength of God, which will work in us. These are the values that we seek to learn from God, from the Gospel, from our Lord Jesus Christ, from Mary, from St. Joseph, from St. John, from the saints. These are the values that we learn from the whole Catholic tradition that we wish also to live by, and by living, also to impart to the rest of the Church. Brothers and sisters, the value of the monastic life is in its stance against the evil ideologies of the world that is contrary to God, that has crucified our God. And that's its value, but that's also its difficulty. So the reason why, for example, Brother Sinan was here, and after he made his vows, uh, the monks came and they covered him with a blanket. It's a symbol of his death to self. It's a symbol of his death to this world, and to live only in Christ. And while he was covered, we sang uh, the on uh, the side of the uh, martyr hymns. Because in the early church, martyrdom was the kind of way to go. People were martyred. Christians were martyred for being against the world. And when Christianity was legalized, people still wanted to take it seriously. So, still wanted to take the faith very seriously. And so they consecrated themselves over to God. The new martyrdom, what was called white martyrdom, was the monastic life. And it's very much in line with the Chaldean church. Which is, a, which is a martyred church. And because it's a martyred church, it is a church after the image of Christ crucified. And as a martyred church, it is also inherently a monastic church. And so this is something that we wish and hope to revive. Brother Sinan has 
shown this to be the case in his own life, that this is what he desires and that this is what he is striving to live as well. And I would like to say that living with him all these years, I've learned a lot from him. In many points in our monastic, there was a point in our monastic life before Bishop Emmanuel came to the diocese. It was rough. Uh, it was just him and I for, for a little while in the monastery. And I was personally, I have to admit, uh, a bit anxious, quite anxious, quite nervous, scared about what direction this whole thing was going. I wasn't sure. Uh, and he was like a rock for me. Brother Sinan was like a real rock for me. He, in a sense, helped me through it. We talked about it a lot. And his strength and his faith in, in Christ and, uh, and his belief in the monastic life, even in this diocese, uh, was a stability for me when I needed it the most. And so I will always thank him for that. His example to the monks, Brother Sinan has been, has really uh, lived out what uh, Jesus tells us to do. Unless you turn and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of God. He has this great joyful spirit. And we are very happy to uh, have welcomed, welcomed him into this monastic life for perpetuity. I want to thank uh, his family for having raised such a man, for having laid the foundation for uh, what, has, what has led to today, for teaching him the values that Christ has taught us, for forming him as a human person, preparing him uh, for his calling uh, from God. I would like to thank Bishop Emmanuel, whose support has been unwavering and who has done so much for our monastery. Uh, He's taken a real risk for us. Again, when he came to the diocese, it was just two of us. This is kind of a dying place, it seems like. Uh, but he spent a lot of energy, he spent a lot of work, he spent a lot of himself and entrusting to us so many things. This parish is a result of Bishop Emmanuel's idea, and, and this parish has been a real uh, lifeline for us. So, Bishop, thank you so much. Of course, I want to thank Mafran Serhat. Bishop Serhat came to me uh, some months before my priestly ordination, this is now over seven years ago, uh, before my priestly ordination, and he said, I think you want to be a monk. And I said, you're absolutely right, I do I always want to be a monk. And uh, he said, you want to start a monastery? I said, absolutely. And so he, he welcomed us even to his own home for the first year or so of our monastic life, uh, and actually took a flat, a grand flat for himself while he let us live in the main house, which is a very a charitable, loving thing for him to do for us. Uh, so, Zayna, thank you for initiating this whole um, project, and you'll always have a place for us, with us in our prayers. God bless you. I'd like to thank uh, Bishop Merrim and Bishop Francis for their support and for being here, for praying for us. Uh, they've been praying for us. I know that they've been telling me and they've been telling me through the grapevine. So I appreciate all of your prayers. I ask that you continue in your prayers for our monastery. Thank you so much. I want to thank um, all of my brother priests that are gathered here and that are outside uh, the di uh, in the diocese. I want to thank them for their support and for their um, advice and for all the, the prayers that they've offered for us and all the um, presence. Their presence among us monks has been a very um, beneficial thing for all of us. I want to thank them. In a particular way, I do want to thank Monsignor Philippe Nedjan, who's helped us with uh, a lot of the issues, um, canonical issues and ecclesial things, and just his um, his example for us, Monsignor Philippe was a monk, and so he's come and he's given us formation classes, he's taught us a lot of things, he's helped us out a lot in these ways. Thank you all. <laughs> and of course, I want to thank my brother monks in the monastery. Uh, we've been through a lot together, of course, but uh, the point is that we've been uh, together. And I thank all of you for the heart that you have, um, that you have the heart by which you have inserted yourselves into this life and really striven to live the gospel message and the, the mission that has been given to us. Thank you guys. Uh, I want to thank the seminarians of our diocese for being here and for their friendship with us. I want to thank the Maserat, whom we have a good fraternal relationship with and that hopefully will grow through time. I want to thank the, the Norbert teams right here. These guys came from St. Michael's Abbey in Silverado, which is over in 
uh, Orange County. These guys that look like the Pope, they all look like the Pope. <laughs> And I want to thank all the volunteers of the church, the parish council, the Knights of Columbus, everybody that is gathered here. Uh, thank you all for your support and for uh, your preparation and your hard work and diligence in making this event happen. Thank you all, and may God always bless you. Our prayers are with you. Parish. And this parish has a, another spirituality when monks are there serving it. And many people told me that. And we are uh, happy and glad and fortunate to have this uh, order of the Sons of the Covenant in our eparchy. Therefore, I would like to thank the Lord for this blessing. And also, I would like to congratulate uh, Father Enkido, Abbot Enkido, who did all that thanks. So I don't want to go back and you know repeat them. Uh, of course, I thank all of you, especially the bishops who are present with us today here, and everyone else who is participating in this joyful uh, ceremony. I would like just to say two words about Brother Sinan. He really looks like someone. He looks like someone. <laughs> <laughs> two things. Simple and humble. That's what the monk should be. And that's what we know about monks. They should be simple and humble. And we can see this in Brother Sinan. I hope the other brothers will learn from him these two good qualities for their life. And also on this occasion, I would like to, to give a class for the abbot of this order, as we are doing the first, uh, the first one who is doing the vows, uh, real vows. So I would like to offer this class for abbot and Kido will wear it always. <laughs>
the final blessing to this community. نعمد مارا نيشو امشيح او حب دالها باب وشو تابوت الروح قدشة او يامد كل اوفن هاشا او خلص وان والعالم عالمين امين او بريخة